The first band I was in was called Deep Impression. And we used to play at Peter May's bungalow out the back. And uh, his father, his father didn't like us rehearsing, but the singer was funny, and he used to do uh, Arthur Colwell impersonations, and he, that made him laugh. So he, that, get, that got, got us another hour's worth of rehearsal out of him. You know, he goes, oh, here comes, here comes Peter, oh, man, he's doing an impersonation of Arthur Colwell. Quick, quick, <laughs> Peter <laughs> Are you any good at woodwork? Yeah, I'm good at... We don't have sheds anymore because we're not really very good either. I'm only, I can only speak for myself, and I suspect there's other people who are the same way, and that is that I am not very good with a power tool. Mm. And, uh, but I'm not bad with a, a banging things. Yeah. As a matter of fact, my father had a music shop in Scotland and had a shed out the back. Mm. And uh, I asked him if I could have a horse, and he said, no, you can't have a horse. Uh, I said, how much do horses cost? He said, a penny. I said, well, that doesn't seem like much, you know. He said, but uh, no, you can't have a horse. And I, th I, th I said, well, we could keep it in the shed, because I thought, perfect place for a horse. Yeah, plenty of room. But uh, he didn't get me the horse, so I went outside, out the back shed, and I, and I um, proceeded to, to um, hammer nails into anything that wasn't nailed down. So uh, if you came in and you wanted to pick something up, <laughs> it was nailed down. And uh, that was when I was eight or nine years old. And uh, I had a lot of fun doing that. I nailed, unfortunately, I, I nailed things into a couple of pianos. He wasn't very happy about that. <laughs> I noticed when I was on the, uh, in the uh, Qantas line, getting on the plane before I came here, that uh, I heard there's a lot of Australians, obviously, coming home. And Australian accents are funny when you hear them from a distance, when you're a bit behind them, because they just sound like this. They just go, And this American guy said to these two Australian guys in front of him, and I was behind him, and he said to them, excuse me, and this guy goes, yeah? And he goes, you're Australian, right? And he goes, yeah. <laughs> what, I've been to your country, I had such a great time. What, so how do you say that place is in Queensland? It's spelled, it's, it's spelled C-A-I-R-N-S. And the guy goes, well, Brisbane. <laughs> It is that uh, time of uh, year when phlegm starts to come back into your life. You were there when I took my clothes off. What made you remember that just now? I just thought of it. I just, that's one of those things that you just come into my head, like the bottom line. Was it the bottom line? Well, it was the bottom line in New York. I took them off. I also took them off in Los Angeles. Oh, so it wasn't really a, it wasn't really a special, a special night then? No, it was only the two nights ever in 10 years I had a Santa suit. Well, that was it. That was the, the bottom line in New York. Christmas, yeah. I only take them off at Christmas. Don't worry. It's fine. <laughs> and in Hollywood too? Yeah, Hollywood. They love it. Get out of Hollywood and drive into the hills. We'll roll down the top and then just throw away all your pills. You'll never forget her, so why do you even try? Things will get easier as the days go creeping by. She broke your heart, we saw it coming from the start. I really hate to see the shape you're in She broke all the rules You know life can be cruel I think it's time you learn to swim Show me You still can be some mystery I If I had my way, I'd tell you what I'd do. I'd drive down to the lake before the sky gets blue. I'd fill up my bottle with water from the spring. Cause I heard somewhere that it cures everything. She broke your heart. We 
We saw it coming from the start. I really hate to see the shape you're in. She broke all the rules, and you know life can be cruel. Biggest time you learn to swim. Show me, still can be some mystery. I To the lost at sea. Don't let me drown. Snare solo. I really hate to see the shape you're in. She broke all the rules, and you know life can be cruel. I think it's time you learn to swim. So show me a way out of this misery. I You gonna build yourself a shed, you reckon, one day? No. No? I don't think I will. Ooh. I've got a studio, you see. Is that sort of replaced that's, the shed? Yes, replaced the shed for me. Yeah, me yes, too. I, 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 may, the only, I may have a, like, get some old replicas of power tools and just kind of leave them around there. So they won't do anything. Oh, I don't actually. think it's a power tool issue anymore. I think it's really come down our... our you know, um, it's generation. It's back to analog, isn't it? It's yeah. back to hammer nails. It's really We've gone good. back to, to furniture. There's Planes, priority. Cleaning. Things. Yeah, and things like that. Do that again. I was, I was... You, got, you have got a very good, a good stroke. I remember a night, uh, actually, it was in Los Angeles when um, I think it was just before you named your band Crowded House. And uh, we were out in a limousine. True story. And, uh, and it was great because... Um, we paid for the limo? No, I, actually, I paid for it. Oh, yeah. But uh, and we all drank whiskey. And, uh, oh, I know what you're going to say. Hayden Keenan in that fucking restaurant. No, it wasn't, but it was Hayden Keenan. Oh, okay. It was Hayden Keenan. It wasn't in the restaurant, but you could tell that restaurant story. But it was just a great line, which was... There was Hayden Keenan, who's an Australian film director, and there was... Uh, 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 Paul and the rest of the band and myself and a number of other people hideously drunk going to a cocktail party in Hollywood <laughs> and uh, and uh, he banged on the door and we were all just falling about and this woman opened the door kind of went hello <laughs> and Hayden goes oh how are you I didn't bring any alcohol but I brought a few alcoholics <laughs> oh. hey, so to Hayden Keenan everyone to bird I think Hayden, that's beautiful, funny joke, Hayden. <laughs> <laughs> love, love you, love your work. Hayden. <laughs> Can I go on the drums for this one and um, pa, pa? No, I just remember that the rest of that story was then we, I thought Hayden was already there half an hour before us, pissed as, in this restaurant sitting next to Elizabeth Taylor and some agent guy. And with his dryers aboard on. With a big dryers <laughs> on. Hayden's about four foot one. <laughs> so it was like a cape. <laughs> And when we all walked in, he just, it was so quiet in the restaurant, it was just glasses and deals, and everyone's talking about everyone's, you know, everyone's an asshole. 
Yes, what's rock and roll ever done for us, eh? More champagne? <laughs> and it was so beautiful. <laughs> Colin was about four or five years up on us then. He's going, hey, you got one of these? You got one of these? Uh, better get one. <laughs> but anyway, Hayden, hey, we all walked in and Hayden stood up way across the other side of the table, right above Liz Taylor and went, over here, love! <laughs> yeah, great guy. <laughs> Here's a song, I still like this one. It's a minute work song. You can tell it's a minute work song. That's because you all sound the same. Here's one. Here's another one. Back 
Thank you very much for inviting me into your show. Thank you. Uh, we, used to, we used to play in a bungalow and we always used to uh, rehearse on a Saturday and we never used to rehearse hardly any songs because we were always hoping that Kim and Janet and Bronwyn would come around, who were the local girls that used to come around and watch us. And so you never learned any new songs, you just played the ones you knew, four or five of them. Do a few moves? Yeah. Well, and all, all going into one amplifier. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, vocal. Every, yeah, every, yeah, it's three inputs. Every, we can all use that. Yeah. I used to do that. I used to bring girls home to my house when I was very young and mm. let them watch me play the drums. If they were, if they were lucky. Yeah, and that, I mean, I was amazed at how I could hold them there. You know, like, oh, do you want to hear I Think I Love You, Partridge Family? I can, you know, do you want to hear that? The you know, and they'd sort of sit there. Oh, yeah. It's great, Paul, yeah. You'd sing along. But I since met one of these girls and she said, no, the thing was, you used to bring us food. You used to bring us a little cordial and a biscuit, and we just thought that was, that was so, you know. So it was a combination of the drums and the, and the biscuit, really, wasn't it? And I think that's what I'm trying to do now. I think that's what's happening with the shed, is there's toast, there's things being offered, food.